quarterback 38. Yeah, same same type of guy. Trey Lance, though, 49ers. Yes, North Dakota State. He will be quarterback number 38. You know, hey, a lot of the same conversations that we had with Justin Fields. Hasn't played as much football, but I love the top-end talent. And there is more consistency with Trey Lance's throwing. Now, it still needs work. There's no doubt about that. And we're going to get into breaking down some of those type of things. But either way, like we talked about with Fields, Lance has some special attributes. We know that. The running is real once again. I mean, it's real. He can make people miss. He can outrun you. You know, he's got good size and strength to even take on some people. If he's got to lower a shoulder or run into some trash, his arm, like a Justin Fields too, it's really powerful. It's really powerful. And I would say really in a lot of ways more powerful than Justin Fields because there is a little more consistency with the mechanics and controlling of the football to where, you know, he can throw it hard and still control it. Fields can throw it hard and sometimes control it. Other times you're going, ah, no, that's not good. So that's the reason Lance is in front of Fields. But, yes, I still have questions with the lack of playing time, the mechanical issues, the consistency hitting some passes that you go, wait, you know, hey, you're the number three pick in the draft. I'm not supposed to see, like, that many – the guy had to go to the ground or turn around or we just missed that throw all together. Those are the things I just – I got to see them improve a little bit before I can make these guys, you know, top 25 type talents or, or quarterbacks in the NFL. Each one of these quarterbacks, we're going to talk about these rookie quarterbacks coming up here, whether it's today or, you know, further down the list. They all have their unique situations around them yeah. that make their situations different than the other guy or other guys. But this one really stands out to me because – you look at San Francisco and what they gave up to get him. I know. You talk about maybe some of the, you know, Justin Fields fans are going to want to see him. But they gave up two future firsts. They swapped first-round positions this year. So there they are. They get this guy. But Jimmy Garoppolo is pretty good when he's healthy. The defense is really good. They're a team that can think about playing deep into January. So you think, well, rest him. Or not rest him, but sit him and sit let him, him burn. Sit him for a year. Right. But then – Look at all you gave up. So, I mean, how much will what they gave up to get him, like, have to do with, with his, you know, kind of how he's used or not used this year? I, I think it definitely, like, inches the hot poker towards Shanahan's butt a little bit with the fact of all the assets they had to trade and everything like that. But I also think within that, even though that hot poker is going to be close to his butt, the also the fear of, like, wait, I traded all this, and he's, you know, I'm not sure if he's ready yet, mm -hmm. you know, will we'll make him keep, like, you know, swatting it away, the hot poker. Do you think it'll be on, it'll, it'll be on the fans' minds? Do you think it'll be on Kyle Definitely. John's it, they're minds? too smart. They're aware of the fans and everything like that. Do you think like it'll that. affect yes. them? I, I don't, I, no, I don't think it'll affect them. I don't. That's, where, that's what I was trying to make with that horrible analogy that I was trying to do there. But, yes, <laughs> because I think they're going to balance that. Like, yeah. Well, we want to get him out there. We know the fans want him out there. Mm -hmm. Gosh, we traded all this stuff to get this guy. Yes, but, like, if there's any fear of, ooh, he could fall flat on his face and, you know, have eggs all over his head and all that kind of stuff, right. then maybe we need to pump the brakes here. So this is a fascinating situation. It is. I don't know, because it could play out in the scenario you talked about where, oh, yeah, we want to sit him for a year. But like we've discussed, oh, yeah, but, but you were 13-3. and three. And you, you're the NFC East home field advantage, or 13 and four this mm -hmm. year. NFC home field advantage. Yeah. Like, are, are we going to get Garoppolo? Are we going to get rid of him? Are we going to go one more year because that's working? And oh, wait, we got, we, you know, Jed York said we could wait a few years before we play the guy. Yeah. You know, that's to me where the pressure will mount up too. And it will become like the NFL talking thing. Be like, man, they gave up all this stuff for this guy. And he's still right. not on the field. Yeah. And of course, I also look at it from the aspect of like Shanahan's had this type of guy before in RG3, and they hit the ground running. And, you know, so I don't doubt that Shanahan could put something together and they could throw him out there week one. Mm -hmm. And it might not be perfect, but we'd still be sitting there going, this is, look at this crap they're doing. Yeah. This yeah. is dangerous. Whoa, Shanahan came up with some crap here. This is amazing. Is there any precedent from last year? And I know that Kyle and John are going to do what they think is best, but yeah. remember last year in Miami, Fitzpatrick was playing well. They were winning. I mean, you could say he was playing really well, and they benched him anyway to get a look at Tua. I think it's riskier to do for the 49ers than it was for Miami. Miami could still say it. Miami didn't know it had arrived yet. Even though they were playing good, I think that they could probably still sell to their players and their team, like, hey, we're building something. You know, this is something we got good here. Yeah. You know, 
San Francisco's different in the fact that, first off, this quarterback's taking you to the Super Bowl already. And second of all, the thing's built. It's already right. built. We already have expectations, and we think they're a Super Bowl Great caliber point. football yep. team. Yeah. So that's where it's harder to do that because it, now if you're five and two and you pull the cord. That's the number I had in my mind too, right. five and two. Guys yeah. are going to be in the locker room being like, what the f***? Are yes. we not trying to win? Yeah. Are we not trying to go to the Super Bowl? And that's where it can be dang- more dangerous for them, I think, than the Miami team that was young and we're just rebuilding. And, you know, we didn't really have a franchise guy. And we just drafted the fifth pick. It was just Fitzpatrick. We know him. This is f- Jimmy G. He yeah. was supposed to replace Tom Brady. Yeah. And then he was supposed to come to your place and be the savior there. And, and, and played when healthy. Plays good. And minus a couple of big moments and huge games, which yeah, is hard to erase. Right. I, mean, I know. That's harder yeah. to erase than the injuries because yeah. sometimes that's just bad luck. Yeah. But – the majority of time when healthy, he's he's been good. I know. That's yeah. where it's it's um I'm I mean Shanahan's making a lot of money and this is gonna it deserves a lot of money to make this decision. So we'll see where that goes. Week seven. Yeah. Sunday night football. Indy against San Francisco. North Dakota State Bowl. <laughs> that would Trey be Lance against against Carson Wentz. Are we gonna see it or is well, it still gonna be Jimmy G? It, it, to me it's gonna be on Jimmy G and how he plays. This, this to me is less about like Shanahan's going to get Trey Lance ready to go. And he'll, if he's got to play him, he'll find ways to make it good for him and make it work. I, don't, I mean, I don't doubt Shanahan. See, that's where it's different with Fields and Nagy a little bit. I don't have the confidence quite in Nagy, yeah. and I don't know what that offense will look like. And, of course, I don't believe in his creativity to, towards the, or to the way I do with Shanahan. But, but to me, it, it, it's in, un, unlike like Trey Lance, I know he's smart, he works hard. Shanahan will have a package of things for him to perfect and do things like that. But I think it's more on Jimmy G with this one. Like, I get that. If, if he's faltering and not playing up, yeah. to, le- up, to, up to, you know, par, uh, I think that's when all the things you talked about start to come into play. Because now the fan base is like, wait, he's not playing great. Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're three and two. Or... You know, we're 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 four and three instead of five and two or six and one or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's just not up to par. And now you have all that chatter like you talked about. We gave only three first picks, three first round picks, and all these type of things. That I think can expedite that if it gets to that point. Yeah. You know, I don't think if it's five and two, I, I have a hard time right. thinking he can do that. I do, really do. Do you think style points will matter at all? I'm thinking back to that playoff game a couple of years ago when they won pretty handily, but they got nothing out of the passing oh, game. Oh, nothing. I mean, both it was all defense games. and the running Vikings game. The Vikings game and the Packers yes, game. Both of them. You're both right. Both of them. They yeah. both. He threw two early interceptions in the Vikings game. What if it I, looks that way? Like with like. Let's say they're oh, five and two, be, but it's he, defense and running. He game. might be out. He might be out because then Shanahan's going to look at it and go like, well, I'm not maximizing the greatness of my team here. My right. offense is like, I got first. They have you know, some pass catchers. I got weapons some pass now. catchers yeah. and a tight end. And, and, you know, now this guy, even though he might not be able to be as pure as a consistent of a thrower, but his running might open up some big time playmaking passes to go along with it. I mean, again, Shanahan's a genius in the run scheme. And now you make defensive coordinators think about another aspect of the quarterback running with the extra blocker in front of them. And now he's going to put people in a bind that way and go, oh, they're in this. And now, hey, I'm going to, hey, Trey, I'm going to package that run play where you run. But if they play this defense right here, check to this play because they're going to check to this coverage and we're going to f them with this pass, co- pass co- pattern down the field. And it'll be really easy. Yeah. You know, but, but that's, that's what the running quarterback does and Shanahan's brilliance and all that. So I'm rambling here. I don't know where this goes. It's a podcast. I, I know. I don't know where it goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated. This one brings up more fun talking points. Like, I, I could have filled up six pages on like, there, it's things endless. to bring up. It's endless. How they want to play it with Jimmy G. I mean, it really is. You could be in, you could do a million things. Oh, Trey Lance is kicking ass all training camp, preseason. He looks like a star. Somebody gets hurt as a starting quarterback on another team. Hey, we got Jimmy G. You want to hey. trade him? We'll take him. We'll give, we'll give him to you. I mean, there's that aspect. There's the aspect you brought up of him starting, being benched in the year. There's the aspect of Jimmy G playing the whole year and them doing well. And mm-hmm. then what the hell do you do after the year? You know, there's so many different angles and approaches the 49ers can do. Uh, that's where, yeah, I, I am fascinated by that. I'm excited to see Trey Lance and what he can do in the NFL when he does get in. I think you have a couple of images. Yeah, uh, we got to look Pete at Lance and some of his issues throwing yeah, the ball yeah. too. Let's do that because, you know, again, a little, it's a little different way. 
He doesn't throw through the elbow like Justin Fields, like we talked doesn't about that way. Doesn't swing it up high. Doesn't swing the elbow up high. But still, the motion can get very long and independent from the body at times. And this is from last year. It's going to be a fumble here. And go ahead, go to this. So right now he's in great position, right? So let's go to the next frame after this. Still in pretty good position. Got no problem with that. Good base. Two hands on the ball again. Great looking body. I don't like mm, that. Mm. I don't like that. And this was a fumble. You know, these are the other reasons, like, people don't talk about, like, yes, it's going to lead to inconsistent throws. It's going to lead to strip sack fumbles when you hang the ball out there like yeah. that. That's all these guys do and train for this in the NFL. That's all they talk about. Individual period. We're going to come around the edge, swat the ball. We're going to do this and swat the ball. I mean, that's what they do. So that is scary from the aspect of playing in the pocket quarterback, let alone, again, it's some of those same things we talked about with, with Justin Fields. That back leg not being totally under him. It's cr like kind of crumbling yeah. inside, right? And now the arm is the arm angle has broken a little bit in the elbow and is way behind him. Mm -hmm. And again, that's baseball. Like, again, you would never see Brady or Rodgers get to this. That's how he is right here. He's like this. Or Mahomes or Wilson. Yes, yeah. they would never. They might drop the ball or do something like this, but see how this arm angle, it never breaks or anything like that. Rodgers... Mahomes, it's all going to stay in here. They're never going to let it get to that point like that. It goes back to your moving parts thing. There's just too many too things many. there. Yeah. So there's that. That ends up in a strip sack fumble, right? Let's go to uh, some of the other pictures here. Here we go. On the run. Trey Lance, he can have some throws where you go, that's amazing on the run. That's great. And then you have other games where you go, I, I don't know how you miss it. And miss it this bad. And miss it this many times. Now, this is his one game from the 2020 season. He misses a legit 10 slam dunk, should be freshman football completions. I'm not trying to be a jerk or snarky or anything there, but that's just the aspect of it. And here we go. So here's a little bootleg, which, of course, is going to be a big part of Shanahan's offense. Mm -hmm. And he's got a guy in the flat that's wide open. But it goes back again to nobody – Right, So I don't even like this position here if you're watching. Shoulders already swung open, didn't keep it in there to kind of you know, keep the – like you would want to be on the run like this, and as you're getting ready to throw and do that, you want to be the opposite of what he is. You want to be like this almost. So now you can rotate through it and throw it and use your body. Instead, he's like this. He's open and just going to do it with his arm and just going to go like that. Yeah. That's what he's about to do here. So he throws this ball. And it ends up being incomplete. They don't show the final result there. So, but anyways, here we got another one where he runs to the left. He's throwing on the run. And again, there's throws where he runs to the left where you go, that's awesome. That's textbook. I yeah. love it. But then there's throws like this where it's a manipulated, over-the-top motion. Again, he's running to his left, which would be my right. You would want to see like that, right? Mm -hmm. The opposites. Let me get that shoulder turned to my target a little bit so now I can rotate out of it and throw it. Here's one where he's going to his opposite side and his chest is at the target. He's wide open. The arm's just going to go around in a circular motion like a Ferris wheel, mm. and he's going to throw the ball. It lends it to being the ball being 12 feet high. Guy goes and up and makes a – I think he caught that. I can't remember. He did. He dropped it on the out of bounds there. So, you know, again, some of those concerns. I got to see those get fixed and things like that. Plus, he hasn't played a lot. He's coming from one double-A football. All of those things are why I got him at 38. I hope he proves me wrong and is at 18 halfway through the year. Again, I'm not rooting against these guys. Right. Here's a deep ball shot, too. This is something that's not a positive in his game. You know, you see here, not bad positioning. Okay, let's go to the next shot. Here we go. But, you know, no load up again. You see the test is totally to the target. And it leads to, you know, the inability sometimes for him to throw different type of go balls or balls down the field. He kind of has to throw every ball the same way because he flips out of there and it becomes all arm. Every ball is kind of driven, even deep balls. He doesn't throw it high mm. and let it fall like we see the yeah. great deep ball throwers do, right? That'll, that'll get you in trouble. Right, because, yeah. again, even like in this picture, I mean, I'd want him to be like, and again, don't pay attention to my lower body. I'm trying to fit in the screen here. But you want him to be like, like this, 
loading up to throw these balls. Not, not like this and then, that's what he did right there. He kind of just was here and he went boom, if that makes sense. You know, you want to be here. And like now I'm going to, uh, and go up with the ball. Right. So those are some of the things he's got to work on. You see he overthrows it there. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that on his film. Is there somebody in San Francisco to, to help him with that? <sighs> Shanahan's got a, a clue. great scheme. Shanahan's got a clue. Yeah. He's listened to the Sims family a lot and throwing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So he definitely has a clue. And that's where, you know, do I have a little more confidence in them fixing right. a Trey Lance and some of his issues as compared to Nagy and Fields? Yes, I do. Because I do think there's a few more people in that building that at least I know, know a little bit. Right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.